Okay, we're back. We have a complaint of uh, carbon monoxide being inside the house. Okay, the complaint with the Generac is while it was running on a nine hour power outage, six hours into the power outage, the carbon monoxide detector in the house went off. So I came out here, he asked me to come out to take a quick look where it could be going in the house or whether it is even a problem. I didn't, he didn't quite follow the right procedure when the uh, carbon monoxide detector goes off. I'm going to try to uh, get an interview with the fire department and let them explain to you the procedure. I'll do that later on in the video. But anyway, I came out to have a look. Okay, so what I've seen so far, the generator is right here and right above it, he has a vent going right into his kitchen and there's no ductwork or nothing. It's just, it's, I'll show you in the inside. It's just got a fan and you look straight through the fan, you can see right outside. Right through here and that's where the exhaust comes depends which way the wind's going and one other problem down here there's one more vent that's going to be hard to see because the light's not good he's got another vent right here but that's blocked inside uh, apparently the stove used to be there so there's a big piece of wood blocking that one okay so we get back to this generator if you go down his entrance to his crawl space basement and the uh, wood looks pretty old and there's a big gap right here so if the wind's coming this way and exhaust is coming down that way okay if you take a look right here this wood is pretty old starting to rot and there's a big bow in it and if you lift it up i'll bring the camera over here if you lift it up he's got another door in there and the door is open so and that will also get exhaust fumes depends on the wind into the house so it's either came through that vent that's over there or it came through here he says these windows are i'll show you in a second he's saying these windows are never open that's his vent for the uh, crawl space but he never opens those because inside the crawl space was encapsulated in uh, spray foam years ago and basically And the other one's here. And so this caps are on there permanent. All the walls, so in cap, basically when I say caps, like all the walls are spray foamed inside. And now, even though it's a call space, it's a conditioned area. So that door has to be fixed, closed, and that cap has to be replaced. And that has to be relocated. <laughs> comes out here. Windows open. Homeowner said you can never touch this window, never. So while this is running, it's going directly in the window. Your exhaust is right below that window. You can hear it, it's really loud. I can move all that stuff if it's too much for you. Well when's the last time you opened those vents? Which vents? They cover the window. I haven't opened. I don't know how to touch it. That's why I don't know how the window is open. Well, this one here won't open because of this. Hey, look at your window. Oh my God. Hey, hang on. I wanted to get a video of that window. Okay. So this window's never been open for years. So summer and winter, it's always been like that. Let's see if we can get a good view of it. And you can smell the exhaust from here. Wait. Where is it coming in from here? Yeah, I can yeah. smell. I didn't see it. I That's can because it, it's it's so short. I get when it's closed. I didn't. See, I couldn't see it. I can smell the exhaust from the generator. It just shut down. I just yeah, I can it. smell it too. Yeah. So therefore, this is open right here. Just a little bit. It wasn't only up, but just much, but enough to let the exhaust in. Yeah. So I'm going to open these and push them that way because I can't get into that one. Okay, that was a little open. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm uh, manually started the generator. Just went in the house to see if I can smell exhaust coming in, and sure enough, I did. It was in the kitchen, and that window was open. It was open about that much, and he's never touched it in years, so therefore, summer and winter, that window's been open. We don't get very many power failures, but it took six hours to finally get enough CO in the house to set the alarm off. I mean, that's kind of the importance of the uh, carbon dioxide detectors. Basically, this generator, it's a 11,000 kilowatt, was installed in the wrong place. You know, when you get these installed, make sure your installer knows what he's doing. Like I say, that close to a window with the exhaust. If you do all the measurements from five feet between vents, windows, door openings, this should have been installed. It's no good here. It's no good here. Basically, back here. Yeah, so roughly from where it is over there, it should have been 35 feet further back. That's, of course, a lot of extra wiring. So it's done to an improper install. The only way to fix it is to move it back here. So I stopped at the fire department and asked them if they can do a quick interview, but then I have to go through the fire chief and all the way down. So it's going to be a few days before I can get in. But basically, he confirmed what I already thought was when your carbon dioxide detector goes off, the alarm goes, what you do is immediately get out of the house, call the fire department. Don't open windows, don't relocate anything, just out of the house, close the door. So when the fire department comes, they come with, uh, they have a handheld sniffer and they will tell you if yes, your carbon dioxide detector is working and it should have come on, or your carbon, your carbon dioxide detector is broken. The uh, reason why I mention this is because about 12 years ago, mine went off. And first thing I did is I went out of the house, called the fire department, they came in, they checked it, they go, there's no carbon, carbon dioxide in the house. I go, oh, okay, they heard the alarm going off, they said, your unit is broken. So what they did was they went and gave me one, they actually didn't give it to me, but they hooked it into my wall and they said, that one is no good. So I called the manufacturer, I gave them the serial number of the detector, and they sent me a new one, free of charge. Anyway, so that's what you do. You get out of the house immediately, everybody out. Call the fire department, and from there, they'll determine whether things are bad or okay. And with their detector, they can determine higher concentrations of where it's coming from. So. In the back bedrooms, it could be low, by the furnace, it could be high. So therefore, chances are it's your furnace and turn it off, vent the house, call in a repairman. Anyway, I just wanted to put in what to do on that. Now this one here, uh, obviously, because his window was open, he did have CO in the house and his alarm was good, but he didn't call the fire department. He called an uh, independent contractor that services and stuff by the time he got here he opened the windows there was nothing left in the house so was it a defective co detector you don't know for sure but obviously with the testing it was it was exhaust fumes going in that window okay that's my video on the 11 kilowatt generac generator and carbon monoxide potential dangers of improper installation anyway if you liked the video appreciate a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell thanks for watching my channel bye for now